Hi everybody, this is my fight on the challenge from Odin Chaos uh, Challenge Quest. And before we head into the battle, I'll be going through uh, an overview of this fight and the boss mechanics, as well as running through the party setup that I used to clear the fight. So, Odin's Challenge Quest can be quite a tricky quest to complete. Um, particularly since you are only limited to synergy characters if you want to get the BT token. And there are a few mechanics that you really need to prepare for, otherwise uh, you will get one-shotted by Odin's recast ability, Zentatsuken. Uh, so I'll just be quickly running through. So firstly, um, the thing to take note is that Odin cannot be delayed. Um, at the start, uh, before its second Zantetsuken, you can delay it by the usual breaks, but um, after it uses Zantetsuken the second time, it goes into Mounted Unity mode, um, which will make it unable to be delayed even with breaks. Um, however, you can uh, cancel the Mounted Unity mode by using a launch attack on Odin and that can be triggered either from Noctis's Shooting Star Plus or using Fangs as to uh, to launch Odin. Now there, there are two mechanics that um, you really need to plan ahead for and prepare countermeasures for and you will see them later on uh, during the fight. Uh, first of all uh, Odin's recast ability, Zantetsuken, it always does 9,999 damage to your entire party. It cannot be dodged, evaded, uh, or tanked. Um, and the tricky thing about his recast ability is that if it breaks any of your characters, or if it uh, lands the attack on an already broken character, Zantetsuken will insta-kill that character. Nothing can prevent this, so even if your character, say for example, has a last stand passive, this attack bypasses last stand, and as I mentioned, it cannot be evaded or tanked. So the only way to survive its recast ability is to make sure all your party members has at least 10,000 brave or more. Um, it will never do more than 9,999 Brave damage, so as long as you have 5 digit uh, Brave values on your characters, when it launches this attack, uh, you can prevent your characters from dying. Now that doesn't sound too difficult, but the thing that makes this fight particularly difficult is that after its uh, Sunted Sukan ability, uh, about I think 2, two or 3 turns, I think two turns after using it, um, it will use an attack called Gangnir. Now Gangnir um, is a group gravity based attack. Gangnir can never break you. It's a hundred percent AOE brave shaving. So essentially, whatever value your brave was, it reduces it to zero. And obviously, if your characters are already broken, it just means that it doesn't change their their broken state. Um, Gangnir will always inflict two turns of Doom on your entire party and as you guys know, when Doom debuff ticks down to zero, it automatically inflicts Brick on your party member. Now, this combined with Zantetsuken makes the fight quite difficult because usually after Gangnir, um, Odin's recast ability will be more or less uh, ready and if your character gets broken with Gangnir and then, uh, sorry, gets broken by the Doom effect from Gangnir and then Odin uses Santetsuken, that also means uh, an instant death to your party member. So, which means you need to actually have some way to counter the Doom effect on Gangnir. Now, unfortunately, Gangnir uh, is a guaranteed hit, so again, it cannot be evaded. And the Doom debuff is also guaranteed to land. Um, even debuff immunity will not bypass getting inflicted by Doom. Um, 
So it's really this mechanic that you need to find a way to get around. Uh, throughout the fight, Odin will be able to use Santetsuken and Gangnir multiple times. Um, usually around 4 to 5 times, maybe slightly more depending on who you have in your party. Um, and so the entire fight is a repeat of uh, preparing for the next Santetsuken and preparing for the next Gangnir and Doom debuff. Uh, the other thing to take note is that when he uses Zantetsuken the second time and every time thereafter, it will always enter Mounted Unity mode after that. Um, and when it's in Mounted Unity mode, you really want to quickly initiate a launch attack to get him out of that uh, Mounted Unity mode. Uh, because when he's in Mounted Unity, as I mentioned earlier, he cannot be delayed by break. But the other dangerous thing about counter about Mounted Unity is that it will also use counter vertical slice each time it is attacked. Um, and counter vertical slice is a very heavy, brave attack which will likely break your character. And it also inflicts a one turn delay. So if your character gets broken by this counter attack, your character will be effectively delayed by two turns. And given that Odin has very high turn rate and very high speed, getting delayed makes the fight very dangerous um, and there's also potential that uh, because the character gets delayed Odin will be able to act immediately after this counter attack and therefore one hit KO you with step after this. Uh, the nice thing about this at least is if you manage to launch Odin um, you will actually inflict uh, defense down on Odin um, once it's re removed from the mounted unity state. So, to counter this boss's mechanics, you really need to have Noctis' LD weapon. And the reason for that is the LD used from Noctis grants two turns of Warp Step. And Warp Step, as you probably have known by now, makes your character turn instantly move before the enemies after they take their turn. And th the way it works is that Warp Step will always activate after the debuffs tick down. So say for example, if your party member has Warp Step and has the Doom debuff together, when Doom ticks down to zero, it will break your character. But because your character has Warp Step, uh, Warp Step will then activate after that and move your character right before Odin's turn thereby giving your character the chance to at least use a brave attack to get some brave and tank the Zantetsuken attack. Uh, without the warp step ability, it's very difficult and probably impossible to do the challenge because uh, more than likely your character's doom debuff will take down right the turn before Odin uses Zantetsuken, so meaning your character will get broken by doom. Odin will then immediately use Zantetsuken and kill that character off. Um, so you really need at least Noctis's LD. Now, uh, Noctis's BT is not mandatory. Uh, in fact, people have done it without using Noctis's BT mode. But it is very, very handy. Um, not only for the first damage, but purely for the fact that his BT gives you one additional use of his LD. So in essence, one more cycle of protection from the, the, the Doom debuff. Now other than Noctis, um, Paladin Cecil at full 3-3 three three is also highly recommended. And that's because Paladin Cecil converted Brave Attack. Uh, I can't remember the name for it, I think it's Light, Light Strike or something like that. Um, is an entire party battery and at full 3-3, three three, it batteries the entire party for more than 10k Brave. So meaning that as long as Paladin Cecil gets the move right before Odin casts Zantetsuken, you can then use his um, Converted Brave attack and grant your entire party more than 10k Brave to comfortably tank Zantetsuken. For the third party member, um, the choice is yours depending on who you have uh, the weapons and who you have built up. Unfortunately, of the entire synergy characters, the only other character that I have the EX weapon for is Seven. 
So for me, I don't really have much of a choice. Um, Friend and Irvine would probably make better characters uh, as a third party member. Friend being able to inflict a ranged debuff, a ranged resist down on Odin, which will increase Noctis' range damage, uh, and Irvine as well. Um, even Fang is actually quite useful because she can inflict debuffs on on Odin as well as being able to launch. So Fang is the only other banner character who can launch Odin and remove him from the mounted unity stance. But uh, like I said, I, I only have 7 EX weapons so um, I used 7 for this fight. She isn't particularly bad. Um, the good thing about her is her her snake bite uh, inflicts defense down, and her S two um, is actually quite useful because it inflicts speed down as well, uh, which helps to keep the turn rate of Odin much more manageable in this fight. Um, the other thing is, I then used um, Shiva as my summon mainly to increase the speed of my characters, because like I said, Odin has very high speed. And the thing that you really want to try to avoid as much as possible is Odin getting two turns back to back because that will likely lead to one of your characters dying. As far as uh, the setup, so every character is full um, uh, summon boarded. Noctis and Paladin Cecil are full 3-3. Three, three. Noctis and Paladin Cecil also have their character bots uh, fully mastered. Um, Noctis has his LDBT. 7 is only a 0 out of 3 because I, I don't really want to invest in 7 and she doesn't have her character bots as well. Um, their artifact passives are quite good and I'll give you an example in my Noctis. Uh, you can see that um, he has almost BIS artifacts and the same goes for the other two characters as well. Um, and for my Noctis, um, he has Noctis, Van and Empress Sphere. Um, and my Paladin Cecil and 7 is not sphered. So with that uh, said, uh, I think let's move on to the fight and I will run through uh, ways to get around the Doom and Santetsukan ability as we go through the fight. See you then. Okay, so starting the fight, you will immediately notice that there will be a message saying that Odin cannot be delayed. Um, you can still delay by the usual breaks, but otherwise no, de no other delay mechanics will work. And this will be present throughout the entire fight. Um, one other reason why it's important to have Paladin Cecil at least at 2 out of 3, if not 3 out of 3, is for him to start off with his buffs. Um, and this will allow you to be able to use um, his converted Brave Attack to battery the entire team. Because... Uh, on Odin's second turn, he will already be using Zantetsuken. So for the start of the fight, uh, his first attack is pretty harmless, it's just a brave attack. So initially, you can go uh, all out to try and damage him, but you do want to make sure that uh, Paladin Cecil will get to move at least before Odin uses Zantetsuken, so that as you can see, he can uh, brave attack to battery the entire party. If anyone else moves after him, just have the character Brave Attack as well because you need to tank the Zantetsuken and not let anyone get broken. Um, after the first Zantetsuken, he will then be using Brave Attack again. So uh, again, it's, that's pretty harmless um, and you can just focus on using your strong HP attacks to whittle down his health. Um, Right, at this point, two turns after using Santetsuken, you can see that Odin is targeting all. Uh, when he's targeting all, it's always going to be a Gangnir attack. And as I mentioned earlier, you can see that Gangnir has inflicted two turn Doom debuff on my entire party. Uh, at this point, you want to make sure that 
Noctis is able to get a turn to use his LD um, before Odin gets to use Zantetsuken. You will get some uh, breathing room to do this because you can see the next turn after using Gangnir, he reverts back to a single target attack. So you have about two turns after Gangnir before he uses Zantetsuken. Um, that is time so that Doom will tick down right before he uses Zantetsuken, but at least it gives you uh, the one turn to also use uh, Noctis's LD. So as long as you use Noctis's LD before the Doom expires, so it can be when Doom is at two turns or at one turn, uh, whichever is fine. As long as both uh, buffs, buff and debuff are present at the same time, uh, and Doom takes down when his warp step buff is still active, then you are sort of protected from the Doom Zantetsuken instant kill mechanic. And you can see here Paladin Cecil actually got broken by Doom, but because he had warp step, and you can see that it moved his turn right before Odin. Uh, and that's really the way the fight is designed, is for you to use warp step to move your turn before Odin to give you a chance to get some brave before he uses Santetsuken. To note, although warp step buff functions the same way as the plus abilities for Noctis, there is a very significant difference for this fight. For when Noctis uses his plus abilities, although they do move his turn right before Odin, if he gets broken by Doom, uh, the difference is that with his plus abilities, it will move his turn before Odin, but then Doom will tick down, he will get broken, and it will then move his turn uh, to be after Odin. Warp Step is different because Warp Step always activates right after your character gets broken by Doom. So it always guarantees that your character will move before Odin, um, no matter whether they are broken or not by the Doom debuff. As long as you can see that um, Paladin Cecil will get a turn before Odin uses Zantetsuken, um, you can pretty comfortably attack with your other two characters. So this is still a brave attack because his, his recharge bar isn't full yet. So here you can see his recast bar is full and he's going to use Zantetsuken next. But uh, because Paladin Cecil has a turn, so he uses his brave attack to battery the entire party. And then here as usual, Odin uses Suntet Sukun, um, deals 9,999 damage, but no one gets broken. Um, you can see that uh, for the second Suntet Sukun onwards, uh, it also allows Odin to give himself the mounted unity stance. And you can see here, um, he counter-attacked Cecil with his vertical slice and pushed Cecil's turn back. And unfortunately, uh, the same thing will happen to Seven here as well. Um, there's no way to, to avoid this. Every attack you do, will be counter-attacked until you launch Odin. Um, if possible, try to have Noctis uh, turn come right after Odin uses Zantetsuken, but of course this is not always possible, and you just have to live with getting hit by the counter-attack until Noctis can use his uh, Shooting Star Plus. This is also the reason that you need to really prepare before Odin uses Zantetsuken. Be before he uses that recast ability, you have to make sure that uh, Noctis shooting star is at its plus stage. So one easy way is just um, during the turn in between Zantetsuken, use his shooting star to convert it into the plus state so that you can launch immediately after. You have his AA as, uh, as an emergency button as well. So if you somehow forgot to convert um, and Odin has used Zantetsuken and is in the mounted unity stance, you can use one of his AA to turn his um, his uh, S1, his shooting star into the plus version and use it to launch Odin. But uh, it's better to keep his AA as the emergency button here um, because you really do need to launch Odin. His mounted unity stance is very dangerous if left unchecked for too long.
Gangnir Plus is the same as Gangnir. The only difference is that it adds uh, defense down as well. But that debuff really doesn't matter because no matter what, each time Odin hits you, you're more likely to get broken. Just just due to the sheer damage of his brave attacks. Um, so it's a little bit dangerous here. He's about to uh, have a full recast bar and I still don't have a uh, warp step uh, set up yet. Um, but you can see uh, Noctis will at least get a turn before... Um, Odin's next Sun Tetsuken turn. So here he attacks Noctis. Um, unfortunately, he gets broken. But if, if you can see, if I manage to break Odin here, Noctis will definitely get a turn before. Yeah. Unfortunately, I forgot to account that. Um, if my character, other characters get broken, they will get pushed back and they are not able to get brave before uh, Odin's turn to use Zantet Suken. And here I was in a dilemma because if Paladin Sasu X, he will get broken and he won't be able to battery the entire party in time. Um, right, as you can see here. So here it's very dangerous because uh, if... I act now and Odin uses Antetsuken, Paladin Cecil will die. So I really didn't want to do it. I, I spent quite some time thinking about what I can do to survive the next hit. And uh, unfortunately, the only way I can think of is to activate Noctis' burst ability. I, I really wanted to save this for later, but I think I, I didn't really have much of a choice. So if you really want to avoid this, you need to plan ahead and use Noctis' LD the turn before Odin will use uh, his Gangnir attack. The key character you want to have protected by LD, uh, the warp step buff is only Paladin Cecil. It doesn't matter if Seven or Noctis gets broken because as long as Paladin Cecil has warp step to move his turn before Odin, uh, he can then use his light strike, his converted brave attack to battery the entire party. So even if both of them are in a broken state, uh, Paladin Cecil will battery them for more than 10k brief and allow them to survive Zantetsuken. Now one thing to note also is that if you see that Paladin Cecil is two turns away from Odin when he's about to use Zantetsuken, and he and Paladin Cecil only has one turn left on his Doom debuff. What you can possibly do is use Paladin Cecil's AA. So when you do that, what will happen is that um, his AA grant him a free turn, but he will get broken and be delayed one turn, and that will actually position him one turn away from Odin right before Odin uses Santet Suken. And then this will allow you to just use his um, Brave Attack to battery the entire party. So you do need to watch out and make sure that he's at least he's two turns away from Odin, at least. Um, and you do need to keep in mind that um, about the turn manipulation as well. Um, so if I say you use one of Noctis' plus abilities and that moved him in between Paladin, Cecil and Odin, uh, that's fine, you can still you know, use Pilot Cecil's AA and battery the entire party, but it also means that during Noctis' turn, he has to brave attack. Uh, and it gets a bit more complicated because if during that turn, Noctis happens to get broken by Doom, then that will mean Noctis will die during Santet Suken. So you do need to think about all these different factors about the Doom debuff on your entire party. Um, the warp step is the easy way to get out of it as long as Pilot Cecil has warp step. When Doom takes down, you are safe. But um, if you find yourself not having enough warp step or LD charges to last the entire fight, you can consider trying to save one charge by you abusing Paladin Cecil's AA to move his turn right before Odin and battery the entire party. And lastly, if you're using Noctis' burst, 
it's very important to time his LD, his free LD, as the last move of his burst right before his burst finisher, because then this will give um, him and everyone the two turns um, warp step buff. At this point, when Odin is about half health, it's quite important to try and space out uh, Seven's Elemental Lash skill users to always ensure that the speed down debuff is on Odin, uh, because that really helps in terms of the turn order. Odin tends to be very speedy with high turn rates, and there are many runs I've seen or have experienced that he has able to take two turns back to back just due to the speed. Having a speed down really helps to prevent this uh, alongside with the Shiva summon uh, blessing. And that's it, the entire fight is really just a repeating cycle of Odin using Zantetsuken, Brave Attack, Gangnir, Brave Attack, and Zantetsuken again. Um, and so you really only need to keep preparing for his Zantetsuken attack, and you do this by ensuring that Paladin Cecil moves right before Zantetsuken. And the easiest way to do it is to give him the warp step buff uh, to set this up. The second thing that you have to always keep in mind is to have Noctis' Shooting Star uh, into the plus version right before Odin can use Zantetsuken. So this will then allow you to use Shooting Star Plus to launch Odin after Zantetsuken. Other than that, you should treat your burst and summon as the emergency buttons such as what I've done with Noctis' burst. In case if you somehow forgot any of this and you realize that your characters uh, will get broken and then will get killed by Zantetsuken, you can use either Noctis' Burst or your Shiva Summon as the emergency escape button to allow you turns to give yourself brave and tank the Zantetsuken. And after that, you just have to repeat the cycle of preparing for the next Zantetsuken while you damage Odin. Now to note, um, it is possible to win the fight without the use of Noctis' BT, so in case you can't pull his BT, it is still possible to win this, but you do need to make up for the fact that you have one less LD charge from his burst, and a less uh, damage from his burst mode, uh, and you need to make up for this by having probably a full party of 3-3 EX characters to keep up the damage, um, and likely you will need to deal with at least one or maybe even two um, Gangnir Doom debuffs without the use of Noctis' LD um, and that's why you need to really plan ahead to see whether you can really make do without the LD and find a way for Paladin Cecil to move before Zantetsukin by using Cecil's uh, AA ability. So I'll just be fast forwarding the rest of the fight, it's essentially really the same cycle over and over. And near the end I used uh, the summon to try and burst him down um, to mitigate some of the risk from the doom effect. Um, other than that, uh, as long as you keep the, the rules in mind on how to mitigate doom and Zantetsuken, you are pretty much covered for the fight.
and that's it. Hope this video commentary has been helpful for you in your run. As always, if you like the video, please leave a like or subscribe or leave a comment in the comment section. Thank you.